the clan of the elephants believes the elephant is one of their brothers. That is what makes an elephant very special to us. We have legends and totems about elephants. Conservation of elephants is very important in our culture. If you kill an elephant, it's like killing one member of the Samburu people. That's why we have given strong respect to an elephant. Elephants are part of us. In this landscape, more than 70% of all elephants killed were killed illegally. That's a really bad sign. I'm Frank Pope, and I'm the Chief Operations Officer for Save the Elephants here in Kenya. OK. Chucks away. The challenge of, of elephants is that they roam such an enormous distance. So by studying the elephants with the tracking aerials we've got on the plane here and with the GPS collars, that relay to what we're doing through Google Earth. We get to understand this landscape through the perspective of an elephant. They're coming up here on the left. OK, see if you can ID any drama. OK. What he's looking for is distinctive shape of tusks and distinctive tears to the ears. It's a, it's a bit of detective work, but it all goes on in a, in a fraction of a second inside Geronimo's head. Oh, it's the boys. That is Aries. That was Aries. Yeah. You know, it's, it's uncanny. You can be quite high above an elephant and he'll go, I know who that is. So this hill here is where our research camp is. My name is Dr. Jake Wall, and I'm an elephant researcher. I study the movements of elephants using primarily GPS tracking. We can't ask an elephant what it wants and what it needs, so the only way to do that really is to follow it over the ground. My perception with elephants changed when I joined Save the Elephant. When you study elephants for many years, suddenly you develop this trust and when you meet with them in the field or when they meet you, you obviously look you know, each other on the eye and you see this trust with these elephants. This actually gives you sort of the capability of absorbing a lot of names and a lot of features, you know, small things like, you know, nicks and, you know, broken tusk and um, chips of the ears and uh, different kind of, you know, just personalities with these elephants. My main work is monitoring about a thousand elephants that are all individually known. We're following their stories. So basically, this is uh, my field uh, book. And M here means migrant, so this is a code for a, a particular female. And uh, yeah, and if it's a bull, I put you know the bull's number, B20, B50, but they all have their numbers. This data is like a gold. Um, it's kind of a, a warning system on what the population is doing. Like, are we losing elephants? Are we up? Are we just moderate? What is happening? That's what Save the Elephants has been based on since 1997, identifying all individuals that use these reserves and following them. When the price of ivory originally went up, there was this terrible holocaust of elephants that swept across Africa in the 70s. And that's when uh, our lives changed into a battle for the elephants. We and I started Save the Elephants together. We just had one car and one tent. The car was the, the office. It was fun that early time 
one got to learn the landscape and the topography because you're forever climbing up high hills and trying to make connections with elephants that were somewhere out there in the plains below you. We were doing two things, looking at known individuals, building up um, a, a knowledge of who they all were, and also getting a, a, a whole team of scientists across every corner of Africa together. I think for Save the Elephants, the key is that we have some of Africa's living experts right here in our camp. We're firmly based in the knowledge of what elephants do, how they behave, and what challenges they face. But in recent years, we've had poaching here in Samburu, and actually, it's what's going on across Africa. This room is the control center of uh, radio communication. We have a variety of anti-poaching operations. We have rangers all over. They are keeping watch to make sure that uh, the whole uh, area is secure. This is where they report everything that uh, they come across uh, in the field during their patrols. Poachers go after elephants because of their ivory. They kill them to get ivory and then they sell to people from countries like Vietnam and China. Uh, so they kill them for money. Elephants being poached across Africa. Uh, very tragic scenes repeated time and again. But uh, I think now we're, we are getting a consciousness worldwide about what's happening to the elephants. And if we can lower demand for ivory and particularly share our awareness about the destructive effects of buying ivory, then I think we can once again shift, shift the needle in favor of elephants. And that's what we're campaigning to do right now. Building information about elephants is absolutely critical to making any policy for their conservation or protection. So really, until recently, very little was known about elephant movements. Radio tracking of elephants is something that Save the Elephants has always done. Uh, Ian was the first person to put a tracking uh, GPS collar on an elephant. And we've just gone from strength to strength. Uh, it was always a research tool. It was, why, why are elephants moving in this way? Where are they going? What are they doing? It was only when the GPS part of it came in, that platform for sharing the real-time movements of data is turning the communities throughout this northern landscape into protectors of elephants. We learned about this functionality in Google Earth that lets you retrieve information in real time. One of the things that I've implemented is a series of algorithms that can analyze the data as it's collected. And that allowed us to supply our tracking data into Google Earth and have it refresh continuously so we, we could almost track in real time. The big female is called Coconut. It's just empowering for us to be able to follow our elephants around the screen in near real time, day after day, and to share that with people who can do something about it. Other species must be allowed to live on this earth together with us. So it's not just our world. Samburu is very special. It's outstandingly beautiful. But a Samburu without elephants would be devastating. Once you start looking at how elephants can survive, you have to look at 
how other animals can survive, how habitats and great ecological movements take place, and above all, how human beings relate to the wild.